Welcome to the Blockchain Hustle, where I take a look at some interesting plays of how blockchain technology is opening up new business vistas across multiple industries. Hi everyone, this is your host Meenu Sareen with another episode of the podcast Blockchain Hustle. Now we are in this series called The Tokenomics, where we are delving into the question, how does a blockchain network and its underlying token get its economic value? Basically, how does it generate money for the network stakeholders? Now in the last episode, I shared about market makers. As a quick brush on that, who are the market makers? These are the guys who provide liquidity for the trading pairs. They simultaneously quote both the bid and the ask limit orders on an exchange. And they make a profit by collecting the bid ask spread over multiple trades. And these market makers thus help in making or keeping liquidity into the markets and therefore they are also called, they are uh, also called the liquidity providers. And the AMMs or the automated market makers, they decentralize this process this process of providing liquidity into the market. Plus, due to the highly volatile nature of the digital tokens, these crypto tokens, coupled with the fact that they are traded 24 by 7, the market makers may go for the AMMs, which use an automated algorithmic approach. And this replaces your traditional order book. Here, the token, or any digital asset for that matter, it is priced using the pricing algorithm. And there are no makers or takers in such a market with the AMMs. Now I mentioned that the AMMs use an automated algorithmic approach for pricing. And what's this? An often used example of such a pricing algorithm is one with the formula X into Y is equal to K, where X and Y are the quantities of two different tokens two different tokens in a liquidity pool or in the market. So example could be Bitcoin and Ether and any other. And K is a constant here, which means that to keep your market or your pool's liquidity constant, if one token amount changes, then the other also needs to change. I'll give you an example. Let's say you have two tokens, token A and token B, and the pool or the market has got 5 A tokens and 20 B tokens. So K here will be 5 into 20, which is equal to 100. And the ratio of A is to B is 5 is to 20, which is 1 is to 4. Now let's say some trade happens, and after that trade, the number of A tokens in the liquidity pool, it changes from 5 to 10. So now you have 10 A tokens in that pool. So to keep the constant K constant, that is to keep it as 100, we will now have 10 B tokens. That is token B quantity has gone from 20 to 10. So the ratio of token A to token B is now 1 is to 1, 10 is to 10. The pricing is determined, the pricing of these crypto tokens, it is determined by how much this ratio the ratio between the tokens in the liquidity pool changes after a trade. If it alters too much, the slippage is high. The slippage is a difference between the price at which you expect your order to be filled and the actual price that it fills at. And when you are talking about illiquid markets, the slippage is going to be high. So you want less slippage. Take a traditional exchange. Here for any trade, you require two traders. There are two parties, one on each side. You have a buyer and you have a seller. You need a counterparty. But in AMMs, your counterparty is a smart contract. The smart contract makes the trade for you. So that takes care of the counterparty in the market. But the market still needs to be created. How do you get the liquidity into the smart contracts? That is done by the liquidity providers. Now, liquidity providers do just that. That is, they provide liquidity. They add funds to the liquidity pools. A liquidity pool is essentially 
a collection of funds which are pooled in, which are put together into a big digital pile by the liquidity providers. And this pool or this collection is locked in a smart contract. And it is not with any one single or any centralized entity. Aha! So now you see that when we talk about this decentralization, this pool or this liquidity pool can facilitate decentralized trading and it opens up to other decentralized functions of value. The liquidity providers, they create the market by putting funds into this liquidity pool. And in turn, they earn uh, from the trades originating in this pool. The more you put in, the more uh, you add to the liquidity, the higher your earnings will be. And these rewards, they are decided by the AMM protocol. So this in brief was about the automated market makers and the liquidity providers. In my next episode, I will speak about digital exchanges, both centralized and the decentralized. So I hope to see you in the next episode. Till then, stay safe. Cheers. You've been listening to the Blockchain Hustle. Did you enjoy this podcast? If so, please do leave a short review, like it, share it, download it, subscribe to it. What should I talk about next? Please do let me know your suggestions by writing to me at menu at vlsiconsultancy.com or through any of the other contact channels as shared in the episode notes. Thanks.